Welcome to my channel again. This will be the first episode of many for my beginners on the piano. For folks who've never played piano before and who are interested. This is also for people who have had some piano lessons but are interested in learning some of the more basics again. On the piano, there are 88 keys. When we say key, we talk about physical keys. There are 88 physical keys. There are also 88 semitones. In fact, each of these keys are known as semitones. Now there's 44 whole tones, which would make sense because you have your semitone and your whole tone. You could look at it as half tones. From here to here is a half tone. Same from here to here. But if I went from here all the way to here, that's a whole tone. That comes important later for things called scales. In the piano alphabet there's, itself, there's only seven letters. It starts with A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And it repeats A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on and so forth. For pianists, how we orient ourselves on the piano is the middle C. This is like our North Star. We orient ourselves off of this. Specifically, on the piano, this is known as C4. There's a numbering system for the piano. So all the way down at the other side of the piano, you have C1, C2, C3, C4, and so on and so forth across the piano. Not only are there different letters, but they each have a number assigned to them. Now there's, of course, seven notes, or seven piano letters, shall we say, but there's also there's eight note, there's eight white keys between the next one, right? This is called an octave. Because you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is an octave right here. This octave represents a full set of keys. Now, when it comes to the actual key count, when it comes to things like key signatures, there's actually 12. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's twelve types of key signatures. So when someone says, hey, this song is written in F major, it doesn't have to be F major, it can be F minor or F major, regardless, the F key. If they say it's written in A, written in B, it's just off of this scale right here. Now, just for your reference, this right here is a C scale. We'll learn about those later. Okay, on these, on these notes right here, remember for every, every key, there's three types of a key. There's your natural, so let's take, let's take G for example. This is a G key, because remember, we start with C, C, D, E, F, G, or if you wanna go alphabetically, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There's three types of keys. There's G, or rather, yeah, three types of keys. There's a, there's a natural called a G, then there's a sharp variant, a sharp G, and then there's what's called a flat G. Your sharps and flats are always to the right and left, respectively, no matter what key it is. So if I say A, A flat, flat is to the left. Most people are right-handed, so most people use a knife in their right hand, and most people put their napkin in their left hand. So A, flat, A, sharp, that's how it works. Now, what if you come across a key like this? Let me ask you, what do you think is a B sharp? Now, this is sometimes a dirty trick I play on people, but really a B sharp is this. This is a B and this is a C. A C is actually a B sharp. The sharp is just something indicating that you go a semitone to the right. Remember how we learned about semitones earlier in the video? That's how they come into to play. You have a semitone right here to the right and then you have a semitone to the left. So a B flat, a B sharp, a B sharp is not this. A lot of people, they make the mistake of assuming that these black keys are just sharps and flats. No, it's just their positioning relative to something else. Now for your information, the sharps and flats are what's called accidentals, and they come important later. So for example, if you have an A flat, it is analogous to a G sharp. This key right here can be called A flat or G sharp. Technically, a white key could be called, 
Well, let's see, technically a white key would be just called either a B or a C flat. You probably wouldn't call it a A or a, I guess an A sharp sharp, but that, not to confuse you, there are such things as double flats and double sharps, but you definitely don't have to worry about them right now. So of course we talked about how many keys are on the piano. In my other videos, I've talked about how to make scales. That comes important later on when you're actually trying to play music. Now to orient yourself on the piano, you need to develop a landmark system. Look up here on these black keys. There's groups of three black notes and two black notes. The reason why the piano is designed this way is because if all the keys were next to each other, it'd be a lot harder to navigate. Imagine if you were blind and trying to play the piano and you had almost no way to landmark the piano. This helps to landmark the piano. Okay, so these raised notes help to landmark it. There's groups of three black notes and there's groups of two black notes right here. So there's seven groups of three and two, two groups of, uh, or rather seven groups of two, seven groups of three on these right here. Okay, I just wanted a quick video to introduce the sharps and the flats, the chords, the notes, the groups of notes here. Oh, and before I forget, let's talk about how you might come up with a system to landmark yourself. So remember how we just talked about the raised notes? On the raised notes, there's a system to help remember the name of the key. Look right here. These ones right here, they kind of look like chopsticks. So remember, C is for chopsticks. The letter C begins with chopsticks. Now, obviously in English that works, in other languages is going to work. But in English, of course, C begins chopsticks. So anytime you're trying to find your C key on the piano, find your chopsticks. In fact, for my new beginners, what I often do is before they even start playing, or they're allowed to play, they need to find middle C. You, everything revolves around middle C because in later videos, I can talk about the importance of the treble clef and the bass clef. For your purposes in this video, a treble clef is, for the most part, anything to the right with some exceptions. But basically, a treble clef, anything to the right of C. Bass clef is anything to the left of C. And when we say mid the C, we're obviously talking about the middle C. In fact, sheet music is even built around middle C itself because you have the clefs sitting nice, nice and snug between the top and the bottom of the middle C. So it's important to find that first. It's your first most important key. So I guess you could say in the piano alphabet, a is not the most important letter. You could say that C is. So think about it that way. These are chopsticks. So when before you even start playing, find your chopsticks, middle C. And this is high C and this is low C. There's different variations of C, of course. Now these groups of three black notes, conveniently, what do they look like? A fork. So conveniently, an F for fork. So look at this, C for chopsticks, F for fork. A lot of times what I have done to help landmark the piano for new beginners is you can go C for chopsticks, which is for eating, E, F is for fork, and you begin again. And then of course there's everything in between. So if you know this is C for chopsticks, you know this is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on and so forth. That's my video for today. Tune in again next time for another video in my series for beginners. Please let me know if you have any questions or would like any new content. Thank you.